In this video, we are breaking down the elements that go into a Shakespearean sonnet so that you can write your own. Hang around till the end of the video where I will share three tips to enhance what you write and two free tools that you can use to just help make things easier. If you want a little bit more guidance on how to write your own Shakespearean sonnet, click the link in the description below. I'm currently working on a short video course where I break down the process that I use to write personalized Shakespearean sonnets for my customers, and you can register your interest in it there. But for now, let's get started. There are a few different things that you need to manage all at the same time when you're writing a Shakespearean style sonnet. The structure, which is made up of a couple of different elements, the rhyming sequence, and the content itself. So let's start with the structure. A standard Shakespearean sonnet is made up of 14 lines. And those 14 lines are made up of three stanzas of four lines each, called a quatrain, and a final two lines called a rhyming couplet. Now these 14 lines have a very specific rhyming structure. And that rhyming structure is represented by ABAB, CDCD, EFEF, GG. And what that means is that where the letters are the same, those lines rhyme. So line one and line three rhyme, line two and line four rhyme. And if we look at one of Shakespeare's sonnets, let's take his most famous sonnet, Sonnet 18, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. So we have day and May, which is AA, lines one and three, and temperate, temperate, and date, line two and four, which is BB. And that sequence is repeated through the other two quatrains. The rhyming couplet is two lines that rhyme. So in this case, C and the. Now, ideally, you don't want that rhyming sound repeated throughout the sonnet. So lines one and three, day and may, that A sound that rhymes, will only be found at the end of line one and three. You won't find that rhyming sound at the end of any other line. And now we come to the dreaded iambic pentameter, the thing that scares people the most. Quite simply, iambic pentameter is a measure of verse. An iam is two syllables, a unstressed sound followed by a stressed sound. And pentameter simply means that there are five of those. So if you look at each line of a Shakespearean sonnet, it is made up of 10 syllables. The first pair of syllables will be an unstressed and then a stressed sound, and that is just repeated five times across the line. So if we look back at sonnet 18, that first line, if we were to accentuate that stressed sound, it would sound something like this. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? You can see that second sound has a little bit more oomph, a little bit more power to it. The first syllable is just that little bit softer. So that unstressed sound followed by a stressed sound creates a bit of a rhythm for the text itself. And it's almost like a bit of a heartbeat, that da-dum, 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 da-dum. And you can rely on that when you write your lines. We have a natural rhythm to the way that we speak. We have a natural flow in the way that we talk you can adapt your normal everyday language into this structure and rely on the rhythm, the heartbeat of that sound, that unstressed sound followed by a stress sound to help guide you to whether or not that is working when you write your sonnet. So a simple line like, I need to go out to the shop for milk is a 10 syllable line. And if we repeat that, accentuating those sounds, I need to go out to the shop for milk, you can see that it works. So using the rhythm to help you get a sense of the structure as you go through can really be beneficial when you start to write your sonnet. Now the third thing that we need to balance in this is our content. What are we writing about? A Shakespearean style sonnet is often in praise of someone or something. Now. Obviously, you can write it about anything you want. It can be about anything that you want to give praise to. It could be your partner or someone you want to be your partner, or it might be your favorite food, your favorite website, your favorite computer game. It doesn't matter. You can write a sonnet about anything. 
Now there's something particular about our content that we need to know about and it kind of relates back to our structure. And that is in line nine or in line 13, so either the beginning of the third quatrain or the beginning of the rhyming couplet, we have something called the turn. Now this is where you actually take on a different perspective of what it is that you're talking about. If we go back to sonnet 18, we can see this in action. The first two quatrains, the first two stanzas, talk about this person in relation to summer. Now it actually points out all of the things that they hate about summer. So it starts off, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. You are much better than a summer's day. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May and summer's lease hath all too short a day. So sometimes the wind blows and sometimes summer feels too short. And then goes on to say that, you know, the sun is sometimes blocked and, and it doesn't shine. And it talks about all of these things that we hate about summer. But then the turn happens in line nine and he says, but thy eternal summer shall not fade. And he actually states that although summer comes and goes and although summer is sometimes filled with good days and bad days, that whole third quatrain is about how this person's beauty will never fade. So we've taken the initial idea in the first two quatrains of you know, comparing this person to summer, we're talking about them in relation to this, but that turn happens and it gives us a different perspective where summer fades, this person's beauty won't. The rhyming couplet in this sonnet then becomes a summary of how this is possible. And basically he says, as long as men can breathe and I can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. And this in that line is talking about the sonnet. So as long as there are men and people alive on the earth, this sonnet will be read and they will know of your beauty for all time. And that's how this person's beauty will last forever. So now that we know all that, how do you start to write your Shakespearean style sonnet? Well, the first thing you need to do is choose your subject. Who or what are you writing about? I might choose to write about how beautiful my wife is or how much I love pizza and how it is the best food over all types of foods. I need to know what or who I'm writing about and what it is about that person or that thing that I want to say. And that will give you a framework to start writing around, whether you're going to then compare that person or that thing to other things like it, or whether you're going to go a little bit more broad and talk about how, let's say I'm talking about the beauty of my wife, I might talk about the crashing wave of an ocean and how powerful it is, and yet the beating of her eyelid when she blinks is even more powerful to me. I mentioned at the start that I would give you three tips to enhance the way that you write your sonnet a little bit. The first one is to use alliteration. Alliteration is the repeating of a similar sound. So for instance, one that you're probably common with, the tongue twister, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, is the alliteration of the P sound, the P sound in that sentence. You can use that in your sonnets. But you can also use alliteration with vowel sounds. The moon will soon inspire my love to swoon. The oo sound in that sentence can be used as an alliteration as well. And alliteration is great because it can change the pace and feeling of your line. It can make a line feel longer or shorter depending on whether you use hard consonant sounds that are quick to say or long vowel sounds that seem to extend the sense of that line. The second tip is to look for alternate words that mean the same thing. Shop and store might conjure up the same image, but one of them might have a better usage in the line that you're writing. Now that might be affected by the rhyme that you need at the end of a line, or it might be the, the pace of the line or the, the iambic structure of the line, whether you need a softer sounding syllable sound or a harder sounding syllable sound. All of those things can come into play and you can satisfy those needs sometimes by finding a different word that means the same thing. And the third one is to play with the actual sentence structure. So you might say, I will go to the shops to buy some milk. Or you could say, I will our milk go buy it from the store. You've basically said the same thing. You're gonna go down the shops to buy some milk. 
You've just said it in different ways, giving you a different rhyming option at the end of that line. Now, once you've written your sonnet, I really recommend that you read it out loud. Some words seem okay on the page, but when you actually start to say it, they just feel a bit clunky. It just doesn't flow very well. And by reading it out loud, you're gonna find that and it's gonna give you the opportunity to change it, fix it, adjust it, until you're really happy with the final piece. I mentioned at the start some tools to use that you can find online to help you through. They are both free and they can help you choose words that will help you write a sonnet too. The first, Rhyme Zone, which lives up to its name. It helps you find a rhyme for any word. Something so simple can change up the game and make the fear of writing seem absurd. The second, simply thesaurus.com. This helps extend my vocabulary. Anytime I think a word will bomb, I use this and it helps me feel less wary. Don't just rely on these two tools, of course. Imagination is the driving force. Now, if for any reason you do not believe that a sonnet can be written about anything you choose, check out the comments below where you will see the sonnet that I just used to tell you about those two free tools. While you're down there in the comments, let me know your aha moment from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Register for my online course where I break down the exact process that I use to write personalized Shakespearean sonnets for my customers. And of course, check out any of the other videos on this channel. I am sure you will find something to enjoy. See you there.